welcome, true believers, to the Sean Geek Podcast. It is a show about geek dads talking about geek culture on the way home from work. And I am your host, Sean Arama. I started this show a number of years ago and been running it uh, weekly, minimum weekly, ever uh, ever since. So this weekend was Valentine's Day, uh, and my wife and I used to be huge, um, huge. Sorry, uh, as as noted, I'm in traffic and someone just did something really dumb. But anyway, um, uh, we're we're. We used to be big movie nerds, and then we had kids, and then uh, we lost some of our movie nerd cred. So we don't go to movies as often as we used to. Back in the day, it wasn't uh, unusual for us to see multiple movies a month in theaters, and then when they came out, uh, we would buy them, get a physical copy of it, and then later, you know, digital copies of things. But um, we don't go as often as we would like. Um, so it generally has to be an event film of some kind, something that we, you know, we're huge fans of the director or one of the actors or of the franchise uh, for us to go see it. And other times it's based entirely upon timing. And by that, I mean, um, uh, Valentine's day. So, uh, we managed to get a sitter for the kids. They're going to do an overnight, so we're going to go out. We're going to go see a movie. Hey, what's out? Oh, hey, here's what's out: the uh, the Harley Quinn, the new Harley Quinn film, or I should, I guess, I should call it Birds of Prey: The Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, which has been redubbed Harley Quinn: Birds of Prey. Um, and it was out. And it was like, oh, I didn't even realize it was out. Now here's something to realize that you know, being parents. Uh, we don't have cable. We cut the cable uh, ages ago, so we don't have general ads that you know we're hit with all the time. So we're not seeing uh, we're not seeing the ads for films that everyone else sees. So for us, if a mo- if we've heard about a movie, like I mean, I'm on a lot of uh, nerd and geek websites, and I was aware that the Harley Quinn movie was coming. Um, and I, I knew about it, but I I don't think the advertising was that good on it because I didn't even realize it was out when it was out because it's been out for a week. And then, you know, I'm looking at box office numbers. I'm like, Harley Quinn's out? Like, what? what? And there was all this talk about the movie, um, you know, the expectations of it coming out. You know, Harley Quinn was the standout character uh, in the Suicide Squad film. And you know, it was some some say it was the only good thing in that film. Whatever. We saw Suicide Squad and to be honest, it was like, well, it wasn't it was definitely lacking. Now we my like I said, my wife and I love movies. We are more on the positive side than negative side when it comes to reviews of films. We tend to like stuff we go out and see. There's very few films that we did not like. And that was one where we actually had to say, you know, this wasn't actually very good. We didn't like Suicide Squad. So when this movie was coming up, I was not overly excited about it because it, to me it was like, oh, this is like a Suicide Squad spinoff. And I didn't really like that movie. Um, and the reasons I didn't like it was uh, the studio just kind of meddling in, uh, during the editing phase of things and kind of ruining what I think might have been a good movie. It, it, there was a lot of potential in there, but the the editing didn't really blend with the story as if they were retelling a different story. And I, and I strongly recall seeing Daredevil, the uh, the Ben Affleck Daredevil in theaters, and, and, it, and I, I, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. It was okay. And then seeing the director's cut later and going, wow, you can change the story that much by editing that it's not even the same movie anymore. So I had, I have strong suspicions that's what happened with, with uh, Suicide Squad. And that, you know, maybe if there was a director's cut, I'd probably give it another chance. But um, I was less interested in this because I was, you know, expecting a, a regular DC 
or sort of Warner Brothers medal in the film, in the final cut of the film. And, you know, it, if the movie was released as the director wanted it, it'd probably be a great film. Uh, but, you know, likely it was going to get meddled with. But, you know, we're like, you know what? Let's give this a chance. There's nothing else playing right now that's I really, really want to see. Um, I mean, I, we do like Margot Robbie. We've seen her in, in a number of things, and everything we've seen her in, we've like thoroughly enjoyed. So I'm like, you know what? Um, let's let's go see this. I, I think this might be good. And uh, I wasn't very familiar with all of the, uh, the actors or actresses, I should say, in there. But we are fans of. Uh, I, I like Rosie Perez. I've always enjoyed Rosie Perez and things. I'm like, well, that's you know maybe not enough to tip it. But Ewan McGregor, um, he's always interesting. He never just does films. He always does something interesting in every film he's in. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? This is, this is going to be good. Let's go see it. And if it's you know if it's crappy, is is some people you know might be suggesting because it's a Suicide Squad spinoff then, you know, for us, a crappy movie is usually mediocre. Like, I, I believe in that whole adage of, you know, there's no such thing as a as bad pizza. Pizza is pizza. For me, movies are movies, and I really enjoy movies. So we went to go see it. Not expecting very much going in, but expecting to be entertained for an hour and a half, two hours. And, uh, you know, maybe there'd, there'd be a few things about us to talk after, because that's what we like to do after a film is... Uh, if the movie's really good, you know, sit around for a couple hours and just talk about, like, what we saw, you know, what we enjoyed, um, and, uh, thought-provoking films, you know, do that to you. When this film was done and we left the theater, we were surprised at how great a film it was, because I, I've been trying to avoid as much as possible, but people have been, uh, saying that it's not very good, but it was getting a very good critical review, but it wasn't, uh, there was people predicting it wasn't going to be very good, but the critics liked that. I'm like, okay, well, the critics didn't like Suicide Squad, I don't think. So, you know, maybe there's something here, and I don't generally believe in what critics have to say. Um, when someone's paid to go see a movie, you, your chances of enjoying that movie are not as great as someone who's willing to pay for a movie. But I'm like, you know what? I don't know. It looks like there's potential here. So, anyway, uh, when the film was done, my wife and I looked at each other and went, why was this movie so good? This is not on the radar of what the critics are saying. Because the critics said it was a good film. They didn't say it was mind-blowing. They didn't say it was revolutionary. They didn't say that it was beautifully shot. They didn't say, I mean, and I tried to avoid because you can't read a review without them spoiling the film. So, I mean, the surface things I said, no no one said how phenomenal this film was. And we were kind of surprised that how is this movie this good and no one's talking? Like, no one's talking positively. Like, oh my God. Because what we realized in this film was how groundbreaking it was, how different it was. Um, now, I haven't seen The Joker yet because, again, we're parents with two young kids. And seeing a film like that, uh, seeing a depressing film like that, or as it's touted to be, depressing and dark. And, you know, my wife and I can handle only so much darkness when it comes to our kids. And there's certain films that we've, you know, not seen because of the darkness in it, in it because we just can't handle it. But in this case, the Joker is just like, I can't see this right now. I, you know, I, I kind of wanted to see it in theaters, but you know, the time of the year, it's, it's a darker time of year. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not at my best at this time of year and I don't want to see anything depressing this time of year. Which is why I almost didn't want to go see Birds of Prey because I thought it might be dark. But um, it didn't look like it was going to be that way. So this movie was great. Now, having said, yeah, I have not seen Joker yet, but I've seen every other DC EU movie or, or whatever DC's calling itself these days, uh, except for the Joker. And uh, no, uh, like I'm, I'm not making anything up. I'm not trying to grab a clickbait headline or anything along those lines. But this movie 
was the best DC film I have seen, period. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know they could do this with a film. Now, I'm not as close to the source material. Um, I'm, I'm a Marvel guy and, you know, maybe some of this stuff wasn't, you know, comic accurate. Uh, I'm not really sure on, on that case. I'm not very familiar with the Black Mask. I'm moderately familiar with uh, Harley Quinn and, you know, fairly familiar with Batman. But I really like this movie. I liked Gotham in this film. I liked the characters. Um, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who played uh, Huntress, she was great. She, uh, every scene, it, it's hard to say, like, I felt that she stole every scene she was in, but then I can't say that because Black Canary was amazing too. And Rosie Perez just knocked it out of the park. Like, she, I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, because, you know, she's, she's older now, so she's, but no, she was right in the, right in the action. She was, you know, right in the fight scenes. She was up front. She wasn't hold, holding back. She wasn't there for comic relief or, or anything. She was there to, to move the, the story forward. Um, the, the, what's, what were the standouts in, in everything? There was nothing in this movie. For me, there's very few movies that achieve uh, that, that, that A-level status. I mean, I enjoy movies and I don't need a perfect film, but there's a few films that I've seen where every single line was important, every shot was important, every uh, characterization or a, a character arc. Um, I've never seen a movie this well put together. And, and the way they go back and forth in time to tell the story, like it's a, it's a, unique, we, a unique way to tell the story to tell this kind of story and it, it's kind of chaotic but in a good way it's chaotic in you know this is Harley Quinn telling the story so of course she's not going to tell a story in a straightforward manner she's not going to tell it in a chronological manner she's going to jump back and forth I mean the lady's batshit crazy pardon you know uh, the pun is on purpose she's batshit crazy and of course she should and of course the way the story is told the narrative of the story, story shouldn't be clear and concise and follow um, follow a particular way to tell the story and it's almost and I don't know if this is intentional or not but it's almost like there's certain bits and pieces of the story that are so fantastical they're not believable but Harley Quinn is telling the story so it's you know strangely adequate and appropriate and it actually makes the, the movie for me it makes it more compelling and more interesting and uh, these character characterizations were great now I don't know how close again how close they are to the characters in the comic I am familiar with the Huntress I am familiar with Black Canary but not this version of Black Canary I you know I'm I'm um, I'm a DC guy from the '80s, not from the '90s or 20, you know, the 2000s or, or whatever. But um, they explain. So for someone like me, who's who's familiar with Dinah Lance, the the old version of Black Canary, uh, in in one quick word, they say, "Well, you know, my you know, I was you know, I was friends with your mother, and she had the same power you do." So basically, quick quick explanation of who she is why she's not the same as the one I know and I'm happy with that, that's good enough for me um, the Huntress you know, they give a, a good story on her and I almost felt that I, I thought Oracle was going to be in there or Barbara Gordon or, or something else and, and I'm glad she wasn't because she has a tendency in stories to kind of take over the story and in a way uh, she could have filled out that Harley Quinn role in that, you know, being the person that tells the story um, would have worked good with Barbara Gordon, but by putting Harley Quinn in that role, I think it actually really made it even more interesting. Um, and maybe we'd see her down the road, but this movie was phenomenal. The, the action sequences, um, I don't think I've seen action sequences this good in any film, at, you know, at least in the last 10 years. There's nothing where I actually was on the edge of my seat looking at the choreography and watching where everything was and the way they slowed things down so you could actually see what was happening instead of 
you know, in the Nolan Batman films, there's just a flurry of punches and kicks, and you don't know what's going on. Um, you know, as, as an illustrator, it, you know, I was always trying to make sure the choreography of fight scenes in the comics I drew, you could see what was happening. I didn't want it to just be a mess. I wanted to see what was happening. I wanted to see the technique used. And it was almost like every each of the characters had their own fighting style, and you actually get to see that developed. So not only were you seeing character development, you were seeing fighting style within each, and that helped you know further develop the character and show what kind of character they were. Um, the, the humor in it was really good. The, the action sequence, every action sequence is great, but the one where she's in, she breaks into the, the police station uh, with the, um, the bean bag, bean bag gun, um, like that was great. And it's like, well, no, I don't really need to kill these people. There's no need for me to kill these people. You know, it's like, it, it was good. It was like so perfect. And I don't know, even the whole thing with the hyena, it was like, this so freaking odd and, and, and off kilter, but it worked. It worked in the insanity that was this movie. I don't know how they put this movie together, but the writing, the acting, the direction, the cinematography, there wasn't a weak link in any thing in this film. Like, I don't, I haven't been this excited about a film since like maybe, you know, I mean, I was excited about Avengers Endgame, but I'm gonna be honest, there was moments in it where um, it, they're just mass battle scenes and, and, and as cool as it is to see, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I kind of breeze through those like, okay, well, there's so much going on. There's too much to see that I can't see anything. Um, so, you know, that, that might've been for me, it might've been like not a weakness in the movie, but it's like, well, okay, that's fine. You know, I, I understand why. And from a, from a story, uh, direction, you know, you have to have this scene and it makes sense and it carries the story forward. But I, I felt the handling of it, it was nice to see something on a smaller scale where, you know, it's Harley fighting in a bunch of people and you're like, well, how can she be, how can she do what she does? Like, why is she, you know, why, why do people want to kill her? Why is she fear that? Like, yeah. Okay. The whole Joker thing, which was incredibly well told, but we'll get back to that in a sec, but explaining how she fights, I think was very key because for me, not being, you know, Harley Quinn aficionado, you know, I, I was always wondering like, she's she just got a big hammer and she just hits things like well, you know what's so special about her I don't un, I don't know that relationship with Harley Quinn that other people do so maybe you know maybe the storytelling is not you know matching but for me I, like I, I really really enjoyed it um, uh, what was I going to say um, damn it I lost my train of thought here um, anyway uh but all around great film. I, I like to be able to watch a movie and, and see the story progress from the writer's perspective. And there was everything, everything was, was perfect in this movie. Um, just, uh, just the way, just the techniques used in the writing, um, the, the pacing of the writing, um, you know, where, where they're putting things and, and how they're developing and, and, and with, you know, I didn't feel it too tropey. Um, but it, there was like there was that chaos in it, which which you know suited. I mean, if someone else was narrating the movie, if it was told from the perspective of Huntress or Black Canary, you know, you would have used a different style. But this was third person. They're using third person in here, um, a third person narrative sort of style that you know it, it made sense. And if it, it wasn't chaotic like that, it wouldn't have been as enjoyable. But it, it worked because it was Harley Quinn, you know, telling the story, and it, it just worked so wonderfully. And it's, it's just nice. Like, I really, really, really like this. Like, I really, really like this. And because you almost have to, uh, some people are saying, you know, it's a flop and all this. And I'm like, how is this a flop? It's got a, it's got a small budget. It doesn't need to make a lot of money to make its money back. And I know everyone keeps throwing the whole marketing thing out there. Well, you can't. If marketing numbers are never divulged, then it means nothing to me. And I know, yes, it's a cost and it's a hidden cost and there's investors in it, but then, you know, there's also the secondary sales like DVD, Blu-ray sales or rental sales or people buying, you know, digital copies on, on Google or Apple or whatever it is they use, you know, like they, 
they don't take into account advertising. And for me, advertising is covered by secondary ancillary sales. So, um, so this movie basically made its budget back in one weekend. Um, while, you know, other movies that are saying was, you know, success like Ford versus Ferrari, there's, you know, it made, it made less, it made less globally. Um, it had a higher budget and they're saying, you know, it's a runaway success, but it's not, it didn't make its budget back in the first weekend. It may make its budget back in the second weekend or third weekend, but, um, I know there's, there's comparisons here. I don't quite understand about why, the, you know, I'm calling this film a flop. And it's almost like, well, if we call it a flop, then it definitely will flop. And there's this sort of uh, doomsday uh, reporting on this film, which I don't understand. Um, and the other thing, too, is, you know, I, ever since we saw the movie, I've been, you know, reading people's reviews and listening to other people's podcasts. And there's people that I greatly respect in the podcast community and their opinions that didn't like this film. While there's others that loved it. So I almost feel that some of the, the shots taken at this film are ones I don't understand because the specific shots taken at the film saying it, you know, it's the story's not very good, it's too chaotic. It's like, well, that's what I liked about it. That's what made it work for me. And uh, some people didn't like it, felt that the, the feminism in this film was forced. Um, and I'm like, what? I don't see it being forced or, you know, people are saying, you know, people didn't like the feminist aspects of the film, the ones that didn't like it. But to me, it's like they're bringing up stuff like, this was a problem? Like, I didn't even see this as a problem. Or they didn't like the characterization of Ewan McGregor. They thought it was too campy. And it's like, really? Like, the campiness added added to the, the danger of, uh, of this guy. And the guy that played Victor Zaz, who's, uh, you know, an actor that my wife uh, follows, he was phenomenal. Like, he just, he was really good. In fact, it took us a long time to figure out that it was that actor we thought it was because he totally transformed for this role. Uh, just his demeanor, the way he carries himself, just posture, things like that. Like, great, great character acting here. Um... But what I really liked was the realism in the dialogue. Now, I saw this with my wife, as I said, and she was pointing out, like, oh, my God, that's something I totally would say. Or uh, there's another part, like, oh, you know how many times I hear that? Um, and just, like, little bits and pieces like that. That's what made the movie great. And these were the things that were pointed out as taking away from the movie or ruining the movie or, or seeing too forced. But when we heard them, it's like, well, of course you're going to say that. Like, it didn't feel forced at all. It was more like, it's about time someone says something like this in a movie. So for the bits and pieces that people didn't like the dialogue or didn't like the story, um, they felt it was too forced or too contrived or too, you know, trying to, to, to pander. I saw it as the complete opposite. It's like, it's about half in time that these sorts of bits of dialogue are used in a, in a movie. Um... For, for example, there's one scene where um, Harley Quinn gives a hair tie to the Black Canary because of course you need to tie your hair. It's, it's going to get in the way of combat. You need, like, th th those comments saying, you know, you know the, the, the chicks work hot enough or, or things like that. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, the minute that they made the heroes practical and some of the things they complained about or, you know, the line where, uh, she, you know, he, he doesn't like people, you know, he doesn't like people with vaginas or whatever. Of course you're going to say something like that. And to not say something like that or to say that it's pandering is bullshit. Like, I don't know how many times in a, in a role-playing game that I've run or uh, in a conversation that I've had with my wife or friends of my wife, like, this, this is things, this is dialogue to me from, my, you know, I'm a guy, so I, I don't really, you know, know that well because I am a guy, but this is dialogue I hear all the time in my wife's business or in her friends or with her friends or, you know, in, in general conversation I have with women, you know, like these are things that are said. No, they're not heavy handed. No, they're not pandering. They're not at all. This, this is shit that people say and, you know, giving the hair tie, like, you know, and then vagina comment or whatever like those sorts of things these are things that 
you know, real people say. And if you're not hearing real people say these things, then I don't think you're living in the real world. I think you're, you're living in a, maybe a, a male dominant world, but you're not seeing the other side. And for me, my world is filled with men and women and men and women who speak, who are not afraid to speak, not afraid to have opinions, not afraid to say things. And to me, this movie felt like a real representation of the real world, not half of the world, but the real world, the whole world, and the things that were said and the, you know, the things that, you know, women have to overcome in the real world. This is day to day living and being a woman. And to say that it's pandering and, you know, it, and it's, it is hurting the audience. Like you're not going to get the male audience. And well, what do you mean? Like men don't know about these things. And if they don't like, why would you make something less realistic in dialogue and make it over to the top campy where the women are just parading around in lingerie fighting um, and, and it's not realistic looking at all. It's it's not functional. Like why, and why is that kind of woman not sexy? A woman who's actually kicking ass, taking names and standing up for themselves. So, you know, that whole diatribe about uh, all that stuff, uh, you know, failing the film and, and, and being too preachy and too over the top or too feminist or too whatever, you know, wake up to this, to this decade or this century. Like this is not, this is how things work in the real world, at least the world that I live in. So the movie, two thumbs up, uh, easily was better than, I, I know some of the other films, um, like Aquaman, a lot of people like Aquaman. I thought Aquaman was a good film. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was, you know, I, I very much enjoyed it. But I don't, I didn't enjoy any DC film at this level. Uh, there was so much gravitas. There was a lot of humor, but there's also a uh, message and, 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 and seriousness and, and dealing with issues, you know, that are real. And I mean, it was phenomenal. I haven't been this moved by a movie since maybe Endgame. And Endgame was the culmination of, of 10 years worth of films. Um, in one film, in one, you know, hour and a half, two hours, whatever the film was, I was jumping in my seat. I was hiding my face during certain parts. I was going, Oh my God, Holy shit. Or laughing out loud and just going, Oh yeah. Like I haven't been that rah, rah, uh, on the edge of my seat since Endgame, to be honest. And, uh, it, you know, this doesn't happen very often. This, this movie was that good. Um, you know, if you want to compare female-led movies or whatever, if, if that's the road you're going down, this is a good movie, period. It has nothing to do with female-led or otherwise. This is just a good fucking movie. And you really should go see it. Um, and, and don't go in with preconceived notions of, of stereotypical films. This is a great film. It has one foot in realism, one foot in camp, one foot in action, comedy, and uh, one foot in um, getting you on your feet you know, getting on your feet and, 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 and yelling hallelujah. Like it's got everything you need here. This is, this is a great fucking film. It's just that good. And if you haven't gone to see it, do yourself a service and go buy it. I can't wait to buy this thing now. Like I want to go buy this thing. I haven't been this excited in a long time. So this makes me want to go back and see Shazam because it got good reviews. So I think I want to go back and see that, you know, some people didn't like it. Maybe it's the same things they didn't like about um, Harley Quinn. You know, the same people that don't like these kinds of movies that are great. And I think, perhaps, the people that didn't like the stuff, um, maybe some of this shit just went over their heads. You know, maybe they're, they're you know, they're not that aware uh, of, of society and, and how things work. And they're not really aware of, of, you know, conversations that happen and that sort of thing. And or maybe it's not close enough to the comics. Like maybe that's, you know, maybe I'm not seeing that, but if this is the kind of films that DC's putting out, like I really enjoyed Aquaman and Wonder Woman and Shazam is self to see, uh, Joker self to see, but you know, I hear it's phenomenal. Like, you know, maybe I got to go back and, 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 and check out Shazam and I really want to watch Wonder Woman again. And <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, yeah, man, like, Go check it out. It, it's a great film. And uh, just a quick shout out to M. I know you don't review new films. It's more, you know, older films and stuff. But I'd really like to get your opinion on this film because uh, I really enjoy your discourse on breaking a movie apart. 
and looking at every aspect and uh, the way that you do your job and this is a movie that you really need to review so I'm going to put a request in verbally on the air to my audience and I'm going to be sending this request to you as well when the episode is released I'd like to get your two cents on this Um, I can see you loving this movie Um, but anyway that's it see you guys on the flip side Uh, peace love and hugs link share subscribe and send me messages I want to hear from every single one of you Uh, so um, uh, we'll see you guys later bye